What exactly do we know about Gotham Knights? Well, we know it's coming. We know it's also been pushed back and delayed. It's a highly anticipated game. Now, following the epic Batman Arkham series from Rocksteady, the world of Gotham City hasn't really had much of a presence in the video game world, and fans, they want that to change. Welcome to Chaos Gaming, everybody. Today, we're going to take a deep dive into the upcoming Gotham Knights and see if the glory days of Batman games are about to make a return. You let me know in the comments if you're excited for this game. We're going to go over everything we know about Gotham Knights. Drop a like. Make sure you guys have those notifications fully turned on so you never, ever miss an upload. So, what is Gotham Knights? Well, it's an action RPG that is set in Gotham City. It follows Batman's supposed death. We'll talk about that a little more. After the Dark Knight was supposedly killed, Gotham fell even further into its downward spiral. It's now up to the Batman's colleagues to come together and try to keep the city from permanently falling into the hands of criminals. There will be four playable characters at launch, Nightwing, Batgirl, Robin, and Red Hood, which a lot of people are excited about. Each one will play differently and have different abilities. Now, Alfred Pennyworth will also play a role as your supporting character as always, as he wants to carry on Batman's legacy and help the new team bring order to Gotham in the absence of the Dark Knight. The story is going to incorporate elements of the Court of Owls storylines, which you fans of the comics you probably instantly recognized. The game will also feature the Justice League in some regard, although it's unclear right now just how much of a part they're actually going to play in the overall story. Mr. Freeze, he is reportedly going to be one of the main villains, which is cool for those of you wondering about the lore side of things. Let me clear a few things up, okay? In this universe, Robin is Tim Drake, Nightwing is Dick Grayson, and Red Hood is Jason Todd. I just wanted to clear that up because in the comics, all three of these characters are closely tied together and they're usually aren't in the same place at the same time. So this is actually pretty cool. Now, like most other action RPGs, Gotham Knights will be fully open world and your map will be Gotham City itself, completely recreated and reimagined for this lawless time following the supposed death of Batman and the rise of various criminal organizations. You'll be able to venture around the city on foot or the bat cycle if you want to move things around a little quicker. And I was hoping we would be able to glide around the city like in the Arkham games, but right now it doesn't look like that, which I guess that makes sense since it's not a rock steady game. Instead, Gotham Knights is being developed by WB Games Montreal, who also previously worked on the Wii U version of Arkham City. And then they were the lead developer on Arkham Origins, which was written off by a lot of people, but it's actually garnered a following. They've also worked on the DLC for Arkham Knight, so they have a decent amount of experience when it comes to Batman games. But ultimately, Gotham Knights is going to play pretty differently from the Arkham series, which I'm okay with. I mean, I don't think Gotham Knights is going to be set in the same universe as the Arkham games at this point. This is going to be a completely new experience with a completely new world, which that's going to have its pros and cons. With that being said, don't expect any Arkham gameplay from Gotham Knights. Now, obviously, it will be taking inspiration from the Arkham series, but in terms of the raw gameplay, it's not going to be a continuation, but rather a completely new experience. Now, let's talk about new experiences. Gotham Knights is going to focus on co-op. The game is completely playable solo, but there will also be a drop-in, drop-out co-op feature for a second player, which I think is absolutely cool. It's a little unclear how seamless this is going to be in an open-world RPG, but so far, it looks interesting. According to the devs, the enemies will automatically adjust their levels depending on the levels of the players for the sake of balancing. In a linear game like, say, LEGO Star Wars, drop-in, drop-out co-ops work like a charm. But in a big open-world RPG like Gotham Knights, I have some doubts as to how well the mechanic is actually going to be received. I guess we'll have to wait and see how they do it. Now, as for that moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, Gotham Knights is going to be very different from Arkham, largely due to it trying to be an action RPG as well as an open world superhero game. Enemies, they will have their own levels and the player's levels, well, they'll level up with character and gear and the enemies will get tougher. That's nothing new, I know. The boss fights are also supposedly gonna scale with the player's level, but according to the developers, a boss won't just get more health or damage at higher levels. Instead, the bosses will have additional attacks and behaviors at higher levels compared to lower ones, which I think that's actually gonna make for an interesting dynamic when you're facing off with them. Now, there's also skill trees that you can use to unlock new attacks and improve your gear. It's not going to be super deep as an RPG, but the framework is there. Now, the developers have stated in interviews that Gotham Knights is not a live service game, so don't be scared off by those enemy levels and skill trees because the developers insist right now it's not a live service. But, you know, we'll see when it launches. 
So let's talk about launching, platform specifically. The last we heard, it was going to be launching on the PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, and Xbox Series X. However, I, I have my doubts. As we've been seeing in recent months, cross-gen games are having a lot of issues. When you build a game for both past and current generation hardware, you have to nerf the technical aspect so it can run on the old hardware, which means the current gen versions aren't hitting their true potential. It also means the developers have to spend extra dev time making sure the games work on every single console, as opposed to focusing on the most recent hardware. Gotham Knights is set to release in 2022 right now, and at which point a lot of people, they're gonna be, they're finally gonna have an Xbox or PlayStation, a new one, which diminishes the need for the past gen versions. And I know there will be a lot of people still on past gen, but I think most of us can agree that cross-gen games aren't a popular idea. Don't be shocked if the Xbox One and PS4 versions of Gotham Knights end up being scrapped in favor of giving the PC and the next-gen versions more attention. It's also worth noting here that Gotham Knights has already been delayed a full year, so the devs could add some additional polish, which could be a good thing or a not-so-good thing. Delays have been pretty common in the industry since the start of the pandemic, but a full year? I don't know. It could go either way. The game doesn't have a set release date yet, but the devs insist we will get our hands on it in 2022, so we'll probably be getting some additional information rather soon. And there you have it, my friends. That's everything we know up until this point about Gotham Knights. I'm excited for it. I'm excited for any superhero game, but I'm skeptical to a degree. We'll have to wait and see how it goes. You let me know if you're excited for it, and I'll see you soon.